Okay, so today we have a Metroidvania platformer with a satirical story called Super Epic The Entertainment Wars. This one it's trying to shine a light on the current state of the video game industry, you know, with its anti monetization storyline. But would this one have been better off focusing more of its attention into the gameplay itself? Well, sit back, relax, hit subscribe, you know you want to, it's free, and we get a ton of review videos out each week just like this one. Let me know what you think about this one as well in the comments below. With that shameless plug out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so Super Epic, it tackles the current state of the video game industry with its story here. You're taking on the role of a raccoon and llama to take down an evil video game development company. Here, they control the world around them by addicting innocent people to their free-to-play games that are, of course, monetized. The enemies here, they are literally greedy and corrupt pigs. Now in the story, expect to see workers exhausted, slave leaders who tempt in players in with cool break rooms, you know, toys, gadgets, free snacks. It's just gonna distract them basically from going home. And then my favorite, the microtransaction vampire. In summary, the story is about a company cashing in on poorly implemented games through microtransactions. Overall, I will say the story, it is fun. I enjoyed the enemies, the dialogue and the tongue-in-cheek characters they've created here are excellent. If Kevin Smith made video games, this is something I can imagine him putting out to the world, at least storyline-wise. Now, that being said, though, I do wish the story did more and had a bit more of a payoff instead here. This one, it just kind of becomes one running gag throughout the increasingly ridiculous scenarios with very little here in the way of a statement about it. Okay, so graphics and super epic falls into the slew of 2D pixel art games we are seeing released recently. Fortunately, the cast of characters here, they are, I will say, pretty awesome. The pig enemies, they look great in their varying styles. We get rats, we get bats, we get huge boss battles, and then we have the main heroes themselves, as I said, a raccoon and his llama. Variety here is pretty constant throughout for enemy design, even if they do repeat them almost constantly as they fill the screen with enemies for you to go up against. Unfortunately though, when it comes to the characters, I will say the animations, they're a little weak. Everything here, it just felt kind of, I don't know, like stiff from an animation viewpoint, like there's only a few frames for each. It's just all very repetitive, with each enemy typically having only one attack pattern on loop. Now when it comes to the levels themselves, I would describe them as, well, unfortunately bland. The idea here is basically to find the next room or location to move on to the next section of the map. Yes, each area is short so you won't be sticking around too long, but even then, very little changes with the backgrounds. We could have at least done with some variants here to give us some guidance when you're backtracking or revisiting an area, because trust me, this game, it demands that quite a bit. Now I will say there is also the occasional standout, the monetization vampires like Garden Area, that one, that's a really cool one, but most of them here, you're gonna face office spaces, breakout rooms, you know, server rooms. No matter how cartoony you make them, it's not the most thrilling of environments, unfortunately. Now, one area that really stands out here are the story segments and interactions with other characters in the world. With dialogue, you've got bright, bold text boxes that are incredibly stylish as they swipe into the screen. And then the cutscenes, they remind me of kind of early, like NES cutscenes. Think Ninja Gaiden, and it really does suit the game perfectly. What I like here is we've basically got a 2D game, like a throwback to the 80s, 90s era kind of video game, basically mocking the modern generation of gamers, and that, that, that's a nice stark contrast. Overall, graphics are good, especially the character design, the cutscenes, but with some weak and repetitive attack animations and then bland level designs, it does let this one down, unfortunately, on the visual front. So gameplay, a make or break for any Metroidvania genre title. Starting with content, I've got to say this one, it has a lot to it, even if it does only have two modes. First up, the story, you're looking at sinking around the five to six hour mark into it. What's really interesting here though is the second option. Once you progress through the first, let's say 30 minutes or so of gameplay, you unlock a roguelike mode from the main menu. Now in this mode, if you die, you return to the beginning every time. But of course, you'll be leveling up your skill set to proceed even further next time. Basically, think Dead Cells with a raccoon and a llama. That's what you get here, and it's obviously not quite as deep. In this roguelike mode, levels are procedurally generated, meaning the game is essentially endless, as every time you load up the game, 
the layout's going to be slightly different. It's a pretty cool addition for the game, that's for sure, I've got to say. Now, when it comes to controls, it's simple. Move your character around the map with three different weapons. You'll start with an umbrella, a hammer, and a plunger. Each has a different attack pattern. One swipes across the screen, one then attacks down, and one attacks up. At first, I thought it was just kind of simply a novelty, to be honest, just for a nice new animation. But as you progress, it's actually going to be an essential part of your strategy. Think moments like, you know, swiping a pig up in the air, then jumping so you can attack uninterrupted and finish them off. Another good one where it was really useful was drones and bats. They're flying above you, so you jump up, you hit them to the ground, and now they're much more open to attacks and finishing them off, because you can just go ahead and swipe at them while they're lying down. It has a real payoff knowing your strategy works in these moments. I really, really like that. When it comes to the weapons, additionally, they are upgradable. This could be in the form of, let's say, a whole new weapon. The first uh, update you see is actually switching out the umbrella for a stop sign. But then, most importantly, each weapon has stats that you can upgrade, so let's say improve its strength. It's hugely important as you start to face tougher and tougher enemies. And this kind of small RPG implementation here, it really works within the game's design. Now finally, outside of these core skills, you will start to learn, or well, purchase at least special moves. My favourites were a dash mechanic and then the ability to fly, it's kind of like just float across the screen, shall we say. It's extremely useful in gameplay though, and they will change your approach to enemies and even how you will fight them. As you could hear, now dash away quickly from some of the bigger ones who are quickly destroying your health bar. So when it comes to progression, don't expect this one to be saving every few seconds. It's not that sort of game. Each life, you're going to get one revive, which then takes half your cash. Because this game's all about monetization, so everything you pretty much do here, it asks for some of your in-game currency. But then if you die again after that one, it's going to kick you all the way back to your last save point, and I will say now, they can be pretty far away. To save your progress in this game, you're actually going to be taking toilet breaks. And in this world, each section, for the most part, has one bathroom. My suggestion here, if you're going to pick this one up, as soon as you reach another area, find that bathroom as quickly as possible so you don't end up going all the way back and repeating an area again. Last up now for the core gameplay, platforming, and it again, it works really well. Jump mechanics are pretty much the main element to your exploration and they are just really solid here. I never struggled and that's, that's a good thing because these levels, they're pretty much all vertical in every area. Now as you progress, even this sees some unlocks like a double jump and these will then soon start to unlock new areas you maybe couldn't reach before. And that's another reason to backtrack because you will see areas you just can't reach. Okay, so now when it comes to problems, it's simply repetition. Having free attack patterns, while interesting initially, and it does add some strategy, it never really changes. Maybe speed slightly as you upgrade, but it all gets a bit boring by the end game. This game really likes to pile on the enemies, and I'm okay with that, but at times, it kind of just turns into a bit of a button masher. Also, the enemy AI, they have very little in the way of intelligence, that's for sure, these enemies. Whether this is a statement on the industry, I'm not sure, but I doubt it, but a huge chunk of enemies essentially just walk left to right until they hit a wall or ledge and then turn around. Some enemies do even occasionally drop off a ledge and some do follow you, but so many just feel like brainless drones. And maybe it was a statement actually, but who knows. Here though, you could be standing next to them and they wouldn't turn around until you attack them first. Let's say I found them dropping off a ledge, which happened a lot, especially a big group of them. I just take them out as they drop down from behind like lemmings to the slaughter. It's produced for me a strategy I frequently relied on, not mastering the gameplay, but exploiting the mechanics and the movement patterns and just their zero intelligence. We get lots of cool unique skills in here to unlock, but I was never that challenged to have to use them too much. Finally, for the main game itself, boss battles. These are pretty standard to the 2D genre. They don't do anything groundbreaking. They have repeated patterns, you know, with increasingly powerful attacks as they go through almost stages of their progression. These, they are short, but a hell of a lot of fun to play through though. And some of them are as big as the screen. I really enjoyed these moments in the gameplay. I say I always looked forward to my next boss fight. They were just a nice throwback to the 90s games I grew up with. Last up for something completely different that I've never seen before, the use of QR codes to unlock secrets in game. This, this is really cool. This is the setup. You enter an office with a pig and a safe typically that you want to break into. There's a laser beam blocking your way though. You see a keypad, you can interact with it, but you have no idea what code you need to input. How do you get past this? 
You scan the QR painting on the wall with your phone and it will push you to a number of different web-based games that if you reach a certain score, it's gonna give you the code to unlock a secret. My two favorite mini games on my phone at least, there was an endless runner with an almost pit for luck to it and Flappy Pig, true to the evil corporation putting out crappy games, a Flappy Bird clone. Now I've gotta say I had a lot of fun with these. They actually all worked really well. It's an interesting way for a game to interact with its audience outside of you know the TV screen. Pain in the ass to record though, I will say that. Top marks for this bit. It was very, very cool and very, very unique. Okay, so overall gameplay, it's fun. I enjoyed the platforming and the combat for the majority, even if I did have a few issues. Overall, yes, I could definitely exploit certain enemies and it does get repetitive. But that's not to say I didn't have fun with this one in short bursts. Okay, so audio and the soundtrack here, I gotta say I really liked it. It's got the necessary cartoony sound while also meeting the scenes well. This, it reminded me almost of like a Mission Impossible meets Bugs Bunny meets the 80s vibe. Just a really, really fun soundtrack. I'd be happy to buy it. Sound effects then are also really good. Nothing too major here, but we get cartoony attacks and movement sounds and it just hit all the right areas for me. Great work overall. Okay, so the final verdict and overall I will say, I've said it a few times, I did have fun with my time here in the world of Super Epic. It has a huge amount of content, especially because you're adding in that roguelike variation we unlock. Combat, it works well, the platforming, it's solid, the QR implementation is incredibly unique, and the story, like I said, while I would have liked to have seen more of a kind of a statement from them, it's no doubt relevant right now with the state of the industry and the microtransaction world we live in, so I will say I did at least enjoy it. Unfortunately though, repetitive environments, some weak animations, enemy AI you can easily exploit, and gameplay that gets stale just a little bit too quickly, it all just kind of lets this one down. With that, today I'm awarding Super Epic The Entertainment Wars a good 7 out of 10. You will have fun here, it's just whether you will find enough here to stick around to the end game, and for others it might just be that roguelike mode that draws you in. Thanks so much for watching, do you agree or disagree with me today? I'd love to know, let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, it's free. I release a ton of these reviews, so just do it, you know you want to. I'll see you all soon on the next Gaming X.